my friends, after many trials and tribulations, Still Floating has achieved a 25 minute 42 second run in Jedi Knight, making him the fifth ever person to break the sub 26 barrier. <laughs> yeah, so anyone who's been watching knows that this run had, has been like way overdue as the scales had clearly been there for a while, but the run just never came together and until now, crushing his old PB of, uh, was it 26.17 with a whopping 35 second improvement. So uh, huge congrats to Floating, GG's well played. And uh, so I'd promised him earlier that upon hitting sub 26 that I would make this video where I sort of go over things to improve. Uh, this is not going to be a review or watch the whole thing together, rather I'll just try and make this sort of a condensed video more focused on just strats and game knowledge. So uh, without further ado, let's just get this show on the road. Now before we get into like any of the specific levels, uh, there's one thing that's going to be helpful for all of the levels, just bo both in consistency and in speed, uh, which is to enable auto aim. So like. That should never happen. If you have auto aim, that, that will never ever miss. Um, and there's a lot of other places, it's just the first one, so let's check out some other ones. First one is going to be over here at the end of March, uh, where you're shooting at this guy. And so when you're not on auto aim, you're going to be, like, you get him some of the time, but I mean, most of the time you're probably going to miss. On auto aim, you're always going to get him, sometimes you even get the second guy, so this is a pretty useful one. Not a huge time save, but useful. Second one is going to be over here at the last disc, and this one is a bit of a double whammy kind of, because you you run down the slope, which is not the fastest way. Uh, what you can do is you can jump, like you jump, I don't know, right about here or something, and then you land like at the very like end of the slope so that you get boosted forwards from the landing. Uh, it saves like 0.2, I think, 0.3. And what you then can do if you have auto aim is that mid air you can turn and shoot the TD guy over here. So you don't have to waste time either, like trying to aim for him while you're running. And uh, yeah, so you just get a better line that way. And also at the end of Lost Disc, we have another one here where uh, this one is probably one of the bigger ones from auto aim actually. You save a surprising amount of time from this. And it is possible to do this part pretty fast without auto aim. But it's very rare to get, and even the fastest ones, like without auto aim, is still gonna be about like a mediocre auto aim exit. And the fastest auto aim exit is gonna be like much faster, of course. So, what you do here is you uh, just run like this around the crate, shoot this guy up close, then go over here, and you shoot these guys up close like that. Makes sense, makes sense. So, uh, with auto aim, though, what you can do is you jump on the crate and you start shooting from all the way over here. Shoot like two or three shots on this guy, two or three shots on this guy. And by the time that you get, like you jump down from the crate and you get over here, by the time you're like at this guy, both of those guys that we were shooting on are already dead. So it's, yeah, it's, it's way faster. Then we're going to move on to Sulon, which is, uh, yeah, so this is another one of these where it's possible to go fast without without the auto aim but you will be getting through this very fast very consistently with auto aim like you're you just try it you're gonna love it you'll, you'll get through um you'll have it like this but like almost every run you're almost never gonna like bonk any of these and now we're jumping all the way forwards to 88's reward god i hate saying that 88 anyway so this is and i've seen this happen to you a lot where like you go for this shot and you'll only get one of them dead um whereas like you need the uh this guy over here to also die and with auto aim both of them will die every time because you're always going to hit this guy square in the middle so that's that's a really nice one now if you're using auto aim you're going to notice that there's like three different spots in the run where you get screwed by the auto aim and uh, this is one of them so uh, I don't know if this applies on left strafe here. I go right strafe. So I don't. I don't really know. But I think it screws you over on left strafe too. Uh, but yeah. So when you're when you're going from this boost, uh, there's an invisible stormtrooper right up here, and it will like even if you aim down, it will still like shoot off up there. It's it's super scuffed. But what you can do to combat this, and what we're going to be doing in the other places as well, is just you, you just go first person. 
And uh, so you go first person. And for this one, you got to make sure to aim like all, all the way down. If you aim like even sort of slightly up, it will still just shoot off to this guy. I guess it kind of depends on where you are as well on this line. But yeah, just, yeah, just first person and uh, you will have no problems with this one. And uh, second one is over here at 88 reward when you're shooting this thing. And uh, yeah, the conk shot is gonna want to go like to shoot this officer over here so yeah just first person you'll get it no props and last one is over here at into the valley as you're heading into the elevator um you want to be shooting like over here right but with the auto aim like most of the time the uh what's he called like the gray suit wearing guy is going to be like over here this time he's not but most of the time he is and that then like the auto aim is going to shoot him instead of over here so yeah just go first person for this one Auto aim with conk actually has a very small field of view, like for, for the auto aim to trigger. Much, much smaller than the one in first person for uh, rail dead. So yeah, that's, that's just something to keep in mind. And that's about it for the auto aim stuff. So yeah, let's do Narshada. First thing is over here. I noticed that the way you do this is you go like from the middle over here when you're doing this elevator <coughs> jump thing up to the secret. Uh, you really want to be like as close to the edge as possible. Like you want to be, you want Kyle to almost be like falling off, so you can get as much speed as possible, um, so you can go earlier for the jump. And then we have this part here at the end of Narshada where uh, you go for sort of a ramp jump here, which is fine. Like you, you can save time with this. I just wanted to talk about this to like in case somebody else is watching, and I want to make sure that they sort of understand this part, which is that like, um. Okay, so if you if you jump late on this, when you land, you'll get stuck in sort of a, a gliding state, which th that will lose you about 0.4, almost half a second. Um, it's very, very bad, but it's not hard to like avoid as long as you don't jump, like I don't know, a couple of steps in after this, I guess. Um, however, Doing this jump, you will very rarely save time. When you do, it's about 0.2, which is pretty big. But most of the time, you won't save any. Most of the time, you will lose a slight bit of time from doing this. So I just run up this. Um, if you want to go for the slight time save, with the it's it's surprisingly tight to get, actually. Uh, but yeah, if you want to go for it, that's fine. And then heading up on uh, Lost Disc, we have this part over here at the beginning where you go in the pipes and you're just dropping down here. And really what you should be doing is you should be jumping early, like right about over here. And then you want to you wanna land like right on the edge. So um, you will have a lot of downwards momentum from the jump and then you can land in the edge in a certain way where like all of your momentum downwards will be transferred this way. So you're, you're going to be going like really fast that way off of that. And then here, like after the pipe section, there's also this thing where I, I don't know if this was an execution error on your part. Um, I thought it looked like really deliberate the way that you did this, so I wanted to talk about it anyway. Uh, so you curve mid air here, which is really bad. Um, I mean, I mean, it doesn't look like super much here or anything, but what you um, now I'm gonna do an example. So let's just. As an extreme example of this, see that? Like, if I turn... Yeah, like that. That's a good example. I lose, like, a lot of speed because once I land and I have a different angle from my momentum mid-air, like, I have to work against that momentum to re-accelerate, kind of. Uh, so what you want to do is want to land and then turn to maintain the full speed. And then over here towards the end of the Lost Disc, we have this part where, I mean, I, I could be talking about how to drop down here on different health and back to situations, or uh, picking up these TDs over here, or how to skip them, how that plays out further up in the route, but no, 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 I, I, this is just like this small thing I like to point out to everybody all the time, which is that going on the left combo is faster. See, like, these move at different rates. There are three different segments, and the left one is the fastest one to run. Left combo, best combo. And now uh, moving on up onto Sulan, we have this one over here, which is very small. It's, it's, it's a very small time save, but it is something you can do on every door, uh, not just these doors. 
and not just the ones that go horizontally, not just double doors. Not you can do it even on the ones that you know go from below like up to the ceiling too. You can do it on every door, like depending on its speed, I guess. Um, but what you can do is instead of you uh, doing what you do here, which is that you sort of just run smack dab into it and uh, open the door, and then you reaccelerate from that. Uh, what you can do instead is you can hit the door, uh, open the door, and um, at this point you will like turn to the right in the situation, and then uh, by the time that the door is open enough that you can go through it, you will have some speed going that way, like this way, and then you just turn, and then you will transfer that speed this way. So you, yeah, you you will just have more speed going through, and. Um, you can actually keep a lot of the speed from like your full strafe going into this, depending on how you bump the door. So it's kind of tricky, but it's something you can go for on every door. And uh, yeah, it's worth checking out. And moving on up to uh, this part of Sulon, where we're going for the trick jump over here across the sludge. Um, so, well, I'm guessing you're not going for the TD on the wall thing over here because you're pretty low on shields and health and all that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about this because whenever whenever I see you doing this, it always looks to me as if you're not doing the crouch tap on, at this part. I, I don't know if you are, maybe you know about this and you are doing it and I just can't tell. But for the benefit of maybe somebody else watching, if you don't know about it, then uh, for this jump, like if you tap crouch just before the jump, you will make this like so, so much more lenient. Um, not only just for making the timing so that you don't hit the ceiling over here, uh, but then also it will make the jump to this thing kind of more manageable is a way to put it. I don't know. But yeah, I just wanted to point that one out. Okay, so next on up is Jedi's lightsaber, and right off the bat over here we have you using for speed after breaking the grate. Which, I mean, it kind of makes sense intuitively to do this. To me anyway, but you want to be using for speed right about here, like as you land. And that is because when you start the level, you start the level with full force, and when you have full f uh, full force, you're not regenerating any force. And so you start the force speed over here to start regenerating earlier than the grade. And when you move up, move throughout the level optimally, the force cycle will sort of make the most sense like this, and you'll get the most most time save doing it over here. And so then, then you might be thinking like, oh, why don't we use force speed just, you know, right off the bat, just over here as we start the level. And that is because as you're moving throughout here, you're going to be like, you're going to be losing speed or, or oh, sometimes you get entirely stuck over here. Um, but yeah, you're going to be losing speed, definitely. And then you also are falling over here and reaccelerating, all of which... It's like time that you're not use, utilizing the force speed to its fullest potential uh, as opposed to like using it on straight lines, nice big straight lines like this or uh, you know over over uh, over here. Like these are all places where the force speed is going to be much better utilized than at the beginning. So yeah, there we have it. And for the climb over here, you do something like this. Uh, I would recommend that you switch to this TD thing instead, because that is super free and fast. Yeah, try that one out. Okay, so going up on this part over here, you, uh, you go on the right side here, drop down, head on down the current, all good stuff. Looks, uh, looks fine, I mean you're going to the right, so you drop down on the right, less distance traveled, right? Uh, but actually, the reason I go on the left here, and the reason you should too is okay. Look at this. On the left, you can now head into this without having to reaccelerate, and that sort of multiplies together with the strength of the current and your first speed. So, like, you can get really good speed there. Um, so it's not just the lack of uh, having to reaccelerate; it's also that you just get more speed. After the water section, we have this part over here where you're hitting this guy with the lightsaber. And, uh, well, now that you have auto aim, <laughs> what you can do is just equip the Stormtrooper blaster rifle thingamajig. And in the left strafe, in third person, you can start shooting here and he will be dead by the time you get there. So you don't have to bump him or anything. 
And then after the TD jump, uh, we have this part over here, and so to me it looks like as if you're going for, um, you know, the surface water skip thing. So, you know, skipping on the water. Um, but actually the fastest way to do this is just like, as you're hitting the water, all you gotta do is you hold space and just aim up, and that's all you do, like as you curve to the right. It's uh, very, very easy. And I was shocked to learn this because like skipping on the surface looks and feels so much faster, but it actually isn't. Now for the very end of the level, there's a few things I want to talk about. So um, later on when you are when you want to be like routing out the extra TDs in uh, Lost Disk, maybe you're going for random pickups instead, you're going to be like tight on TDs and stuff. So you're going to be using these guys to damage down as much as possible. Uh, instead of, uh, you know, using the TDs later on, as you're doing here. So you want to get rid of, um, there you want to be getting rid of your shields and some of your health. If you didn't get, like, enough of your health, you can also use, you know, these water boys. You can use the second one of them and also get a nice boost off of it to, to damage down so you have, like, like the correct health to do, do the final clip. <coughs> Then over here, um, I noticed that you're jumping off of this. Don't do not do that. <laughs> also, don't jump as you hit, especially not after jumping on this. Oh god, double whammy. No, so when you're jumping here, you're going to be hitting this thing. You're going to be hitting this slope with more force. And uh, that force is going to be pushing you that way. You want to be going this way, so that's bad. Just, you know, drop off of it. Don't jump off of it. Then you want to be going to over there and do five jumps, I think, across it is. That will set you up properly for getting the boost off of this guy too, if you're doing that, the boost slash damage down. Um, yeah, so there's this part. Also, you will have like the correct angle. This is never gonna be a good angle the way you're doing it here. Anyway, <coughs> moving on. After this whole part, you, uh, you still have too much shields and uh, health. So you, you, uh, whatchamacallit, you're damaging down here, which is good. This is a good spot to do it. But if you do it, then do it right here in the corner. Because with the geometry of how this works, you're never going to get through this corner without losing speed. So you're going to have to reaccelerate out of this. And so then you can use the TD for that reacceleration right here. You're going to take more damage doing that, though. So yeah, take note, note of that, it, whenever you are using TDs in this general general area to damage down, um, that here you will take more damage, but you will save more time. Over here you will take less damage. You just gotta like sort of try it and see what the difference is. It is quite significant, like the, the amount of damage you take, the difference in them is pretty significant, <clears throat> that's what I mean. So yeah, you have this part, and then uh, moving on here. This was a very nice skip, by the way. Uh, surface skip thing. Water surface skip. <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to say that going into here, I think you're at the point where you should start trying to implement the, you know, early TDs here. It's not hard. Uh, you just get a sense for it. You use the texture on this, this cross over here to uh, find out where to, like, start throwing the TDs early. I'm sure, like, I mean, you're good enough now. I think once you try it, you'll think it's pretty easy. And as it turns out, your Baron set was pretty good. I didn't have anything to say about it. So we're moving on, on to the next, next level, which is into the Dark Palace. And yeah, so we, we have this jump over here. I don't think you should do this, really. I mean, I, I know it's not super, super hard or anything. And I know you can do it. It's just that I don't think that the risk reward is called for at your current time. And I mean, I know this is sort of a stylistic thing of how you want to approach the run. Do it if you want. But just know that failing this loses way more time than you think. It's like four, maybe like five seconds. It's a lot. So, yeah, I don't know. Up to you. Later on, we have the climb over here, which um, you just sort of you sort of freestyle this, which is fine. I mean, you can get. I I was having good consistency with this when I was doing it as well. So it's, it's definitely not bad. 
Um, I do feel like though that I upped my consistency by a little bit by doing this where um so like yeah see here as this immediately as it starts going down I do a neutral swing and so then uh at the end of this animation like he tilts his sword to the left and then he stops it there and so I'm able to use that as sort of a cue for one to jump it's both like it's both an audio cue and a visual cue I don't know I feel like it helps a little bit Maybe not that much, but something to maybe try out, see if you like it. And then we have this, oh boy, um, okay, so... I really think you should be doing the stairway strat here, honest. I think everybody should, I think I should do the stairway strat. I don't know why I did the other one in my PB, but like, yeah, so if you make a quick save here, and you time, you know, just going like that, and then you time going like that, getting this one, you'll see that you're only saving like 0.1. It's so little time that you're saving from doing this, uh, where you're getting the armor later. And for that, you risk losing the run to uh, either, you know, you know the, the door can get soft locked from a corpse over here. You can also get soft locked in a death loop. Uh, or you can just lose time going up, like, you know, you start getting crushed a little bit and then you have to, like, reload the quick save and do it again, and, like, any time loss here is just bad. It, none of this is worth it for 0.1 seconds. I... yeah. And then we have Palace Escape, where I notice you jump up early, like, over here. And, uh, you know, over here, like that, kind of. Uh, which is good. I mean, it is the fastest way to do it. But I, like... Like, because that is kind of difficult to set up a save with, to adjust from, and you know, get the angle first try and stuff. I like going more to the- more towards here before I jump, so that I can- I like- I have an easier time setting up the angle like mid-air like that, kind of. Then I can just make a quick save there. Uh, very easy to adjust, like that, and uh, you also get the angle first try more often. And then we have a time saver at the beginning of fuel station that maybe you know about this and just don't do it for consistency. But um, what you can do is uh, you can, at the beginning of the level here, you just put in the four speed and then you start strafing to the right and then you can land on this. Just go right away. Really nice. So you don't have to land and then jump up like this. Um, it is a little bit tricky because you gotta time it out of the load screen, but the load screen is consistent, which is weird that the load screens are like that, but the timing is consistent, so uh, you can get good at it. And um, yeah, then if you fail it, um, don't drop down here and go again because you're gonna be wasting a lot of time from falling with the four speed you you want to keep that four speed for you know useful stuff later on um so just restart and do it again because out of the restart you're gonna get it like every time like if it's so easy to time it you don't have to worry about the load screen timing so uh yeah that's a thing you can do uh, over here you do a uh, charge force jump up there don't don't do that. Just when you get here, tap force jump. You'll eat like 25 damage or so, I think. Uh, but you just tank the damage, it's worth going fast. Like the charge time and then the slower jump is not worth saving. I mean, you're not gonna be using the health for anything anyway, so... And on um, this part of the run, this is not really like a suggestion or anything, I just wanted to put this in the video that... Um, Going around here, you know, going on the inside and going up the elevator, as opposed to going out here and then force jumping up. Um, the reason I do that is to get one extra force jump in the long elevator after this. Uh, thing is though, I'm pretty sure I never properly timed this. Um, I mean, going out here and force jumping up, it does save a f little bit over over this. I mean, this is still pretty fast, you know, going in this tiny elevator. And in my mind, it just seems that it should save a bunch more to get, you know, another jump in the long elevator. But, I mean, I, yeah, I should just put it out there that I have not timed that, really, I'm pretty sure. Um, also, over here, uh, when you're going up, 
uh, you should jump immediately as you hear this elevator start moving and you will get like the perfect height to uh, jump up out of this. It's a very slow elevator so you'll, you'll save a fair bit by jumping in. And heading on up to the end of the level, you always uh, grab these shields over here. Don't grab these. Yeah, just, just don't grab these. Okay, so maybe, maybe you could get the perfect position and angle and momentum that you can grab these without like grinding up against the wall and losing speed or what, what happens here, which is like you, first you sort of bump against the wall a little bit and then you bounce hell out of the wall and you get a super bad line over here. Just don't get them. You don't need them. You get armor immediately after the beginning of 8088's reward anyway. Like, you just don't need these. Alright, and then we have 8088's reward where um, right over here we have... Uh, yeah, you conk this guy up here. Don't, don't conk this guy. Like, I mean, okay, you kill both of these. I don't know, maybe I guess this guy can block you sometimes. I don't really think I've ever had that problem that I remember, but I guess that's the thing. But anyway, don't, you don't need to kill them. Um, but most of all, see this guy over here, he's like the gatekeeper of this area, right? Because after you've gone up here, you know, you hit the switch, and then you're going to be heading on back down over here. He's going to be coming up. And so you want to like drop down through this gap that he leaves, like that. And um, for this reason, you want him to start moving up here as fast as possible. And when you're running here and you're conking, uh, I mean, first of all, you're not strafing because you're aiming, but yeah, you're you're getting you're getting pushback, mostly from the conk, which is bad. Because you want to get out of here as soon as possible. So what I do, I just run up here, I jump up. Not force jump, because uh, force jump will give you airtime that you don't want. Just a normal jump, so you get grounded immediately, and then you go do the stuff and head on them back down. And uh, if you do it like that, um, you should be able to... Uh, he should be, like, just at the very beginning of the staircase as you get back and you can get through here like very easily. <clears throat> then after this we have another conk over here which uh, don't conk while in mid-air like this because it's the same thing as the conk before where you get pushed back but in mid-air it is much more pronounced uh, you, like you yeah, the pushback is just more pronounced, and you can also not re-accelerate back in midair, really. So you lose more speed like that. So just run on the ground and shoot as you are like over here-ish. Also, since you're going to be using auto-aim, you got to be first person for this. And this one is sort of tricky with this, because sometimes the auto-aim will be troll anyway, despite you being in first person, which is very weird, because the conk... Auto aim should be very, very narrow in first person. But sometimes in this particular spot, it is not. I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah. That's it for the beginning of this area, I guess. Alright, and back to this part where I was talking about the conk auto aim thing before. Um, yeah, no, okay, so at this part. When uh, when you're going up on this, see how when you jump up, you have a, a lot of, of airtime here? Or you're not really moving. You can crouch tap jump up on this and you'll be able to like start moving full speed immediately. It's super nice. Then uh, let's see. Here at the end when you're jumping out of the pipe. Whenever you get the clean jump out like that so you get like all that nice air time hours, all that stuff. You can, uh, you can turn around and conk. Uh, if you have a lot of health and shields like you do right now you can you can turn around like early and shoot the wall like now and get uh you know a boost off of the wall uh but if not you can like wait until here and then then do the conk just for you know the pushback but after this we have pick and gork even though one is a miniature just just kidding uh no we don't care about this so uh no okay yeah here we go this part uh, on escape with the map, conk up here. On this yellow elevator, you just sort of wait here. 
Um, you should uh, immediately as you head in just do a charged force jump, like the lowest possible charge force jump will give you the perfect height to just barely make it out. It's uh, super nice. And lost planet of the Jedi, yay. Okay, so um, right over here you do a uh, lightsaber swing at this grate, breaking it, but you also lose all your speed over here, not good. Uh, what you want to do is you want to use the conk, so you conk over here, and then first person, because now we're in auto aim land, right? So you do that, and then just first person shoot the grate from over here, give it jump. Um, and then, now that this grate is out of the way, you will also have more speed, so it will be easier for you to do the window strat if you want. Now, the window strat, I imagine the reason probably you haven't been messing with it really is because you get the armor first and so um, you will probably get shot by these guys and so you will have less of a chance to uh, be able to do the rail dead thing later on but the thing is the rail dead thing barely saves that much honestly um, doing the window strat here and then let's say you get shot a little bit and so then you do the conk strat instead of the rail dead strat later on you will still have saved time doing that like just that's the time save you get from this area going the window uh compared to what you're doing here, which is you know you do you do the you hit the switch up here first, yeah, you go up here first, hit this, then you head back down later on for the armor and back down <coughs> um yeah, so that's uh one thing, and then uh over here, as you're heading out of this area. You should always blind swing here, like if you're going through a door, you should always blind swing here, like right as you're opening, because there, a lot of the time there's people here, so yeah, just blind swing. Then over here, you're missing this one with the primary fire, it happens a lot with primary fire. I normally like primary fire, like specifically the side swing for these, uh, these types of switches, but for this one in particular, I like secondary fire better. Um, just because of the angle, but yeah, of course, normally first person or uh, primary fire is preferable because if you miss, then you can just you know go again very fast. Of course, then over here your four speed run out. You, I don't know if you probably didn't notice, and so you go for this with and then you go in here without the four speed. I nearly had a heart attack with that because that is quite keen on not working without the force speed here but you did it you did it and it worked anyway later on here so let's talk about the um, rail dead versus the conk thing again so when you're doing uh the rail dead here the only time that you're really saving off of the conk is about the time it takes to run from there to there because that's how long it takes for you to equip rail dead again after landing and after the cooldown from the conk shot has ended. So you would go here, you do a force jump, like a full force jump, just normal tap jump, and then you delay the conk down as much as possible. And I think you can do this with like as low a shield as like, I don't know, 110 or something. Probably around there. We're gonna do like one more conk after that, but you know, for the for the big elevator, but the, the delayed conk jump deals so little damage to your shields, so it's fine. But yeah, so you do that, and then you land over here, run over here, equip the rail dead, so you can do this one. And if you're lower on... Uh, and th this is when you would be losing time, when you've taken a lot of damage, is when you have to go for, you know, the old route, where you go um, over here. So if you went for, you know, the window strat that I was talking about earlier, where you grab the armor <coughs> early, um, this is, w when you have to go for this one, this is when you're losing time. But it's not much, it's like a second or two. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty much, no, okay, there was one more thing. Yeah, over here. So you do the thing where you go in the corner and uh, boom, you fail this once. And then you do it again and you fail it twice I believe yes and then you get it so um, the thing with this is okay so not, uh, actually let's check this out so 
You have a lot of airtime here, is what I wanted to get at. And also, the way you're doing this is kind of difficult, I think. More difficult than what I do, which is... So, just hit the... After you hit this, just run on down there to this gray area. And as you hit the middle of this, just about, you do the... You do the conch jump. It's the max conch jump. And you will end up with this with like not a lot of airtime, about as much as you had there, I think, if not even less actually. And then you just do, you know, yeah, the force jump here, and uh, it will have less airtime than you have here for sure. So it's easier and better. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think you should try it out and see how you feel about it. And then we have ascent where. Uh, Okay, so here in the beginning, you don't use force speed for like all of this. Here, you start force speed. That is bad for. Well, I mean, first of all, this area just goes a little bit slower, but then there's uh, a little bit more time loss that will happen later on. Also, I think having force speed just immediately here in the elevator for this rocket jump, I, I think it's easier to do with the uh, force speed active. But that's that's probably his preference. Anyway, all of this rest I mean this stuff I don't really have anything much to say about. But then going up here. This is where the four speed runs out, and so you lose speed there while you have to refresh for a second. It's not a big one, you get that refresh pretty quick, but uh if you had used four speed, it would have ran out by now, and then here you can force speed it just as you go up here. Um, yeah, so okay, you're you're losing time here too. But that, that this is just this will happen if you don't have like a start at the beginning where everything goes good. I mean everything did go good for you at the beginning here, but you did not use force speed immediately, so you were kind of a little bit too slow to get the cycle here. Uh, you want to be faster than this so that you can do, the, you know, the force jump from here up to, uh, well, you know, where you need to go to. Um, if you feel like you are not, if you feel like you didn't go fast enough, which maybe you felt here, maybe maybe sometimes you do go faster there. Uh, maybe I I don't think I've ever seen you do this force jump here. Maybe you just always default to this. Uh, but yeah, it, so you can you can just think of it like that. If everything goes well, then I can go for this jump. If not, uh, just do a normal jump, not a force jump. Okay, so uh, then up on here, and over here you start crouching all the way over there. Um, I don't know if you don't know or if you're panicking or anything, but okay, so when you're crouching and you're going out on this, you will never lose traction here, no matter how much speed you have. Like, it looks as if you would start falling, right? But see, you're sort you of like just floating here. I don't know, the geometry is kind of weird. Um, so what you want to do is you want to like run out full speed, as fast as you can, and then once you're over here, you crouch, and then do the turn, like with much more speed. Now for the rest of this, you actually have a lot of time to save on just implementing boosts that you're not using. So, um, Oh yeah, for, for this first one, um, I think it's a good idea to um, use this one, use the button, and then as you're waiting for this one to go up, you go and grab shields. It is actually possible to grab those shields and make it to this button over here without losing time. It is insanely difficult, like you will, you will, you will have to do like a thousand tries. <laughs> but basically, if you move fast, you can at least not lose that much time. You are gonna lose time, like, off of just not grabbing the shields, but uh, you're gonna make it back from having full shields. It is worth just grabbing. Uh, yeah, so, um, then we have this thing going on. You should not be 
like if you if you do do the button thing you're probably not going to be taking any damage from this guy so uh, at this point you're going to have like 200 shields um for this rocket boost what i like to do i like to um i i, I kind of forget how exactly i did it i think it was like um hit the guy primary fire with the lightsaber spam out the uh, equip for the rail dead and then by the time that the rail dead is equipped and ready to go you will be at the height that you need to be it's either that like with the primary fire lightsaber or it is a secondary fire conk one of those two you'll have to check it out yourself but yeah so that's a very nice time timing for that um then over here, I believe you do this one, the, the boost off of this one. So that's a big one to also do. That one is way more important. Uh, then over here, you don't do the window thing. You should practice that. It's really not that tough once you get the hang of it. Um, and then we have this last one where you don't boost on this either. Re really, this level you have a lot to improve just by getting the boosts. Not even like not even like mentioning the um, updraft jump and all that. Yeah, for uh, I believe for the end here, I did not have any more notes. Yeah, I know. Just do the boosts. Forehead. And into the valley. Everybody's favorite level. Okay, so first off, um, going in the middle of these boxes is indeed faster. Um, a little bit later on here, we have you... Uh, yeah, this part over here. Jump up these stairs. These will lose you time. Uh, you're gonna be going up this stairs one more time later on in the level, so yeah, jump both of those times. We'll save a little bit of time. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, then we have the thing over here with the key. Yeah, so ignore these guys. These guys don't matter at all. Don't even, don't even bother. Just run up to this guy. Uh, also, if you did the level properly... A four speed should be running out just about when you kill him. Uh, but yeah, so what you do is you run up here to the button, yeah, kill him, turn around, hit this while this guy is like dying. Because we're not going to be able to grab the key right away because his collision is going to be in the way. So his way, just hit the switch while his collision is going away. Then go grab the key. Just like that. Actually, yeah, you did that there. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, the stairs again, and then, okay, so over here, over here, you run out of uh, speed, and you don't re-speed. I don't know if this is because you want to, like, try to conserve speed, or conserve force, which you should not do, because, I mean, you have infinite force, basically, at this point. Um, or if it was a nervosity thing, or, or, if you wanted to not have four speed for, you know, the clip through this. That is understandable. Um, I also prefer not having four speed when going through this. Oh, there you go with the four speed. Okay, so I don't know what that was about then. <laughs> it's, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, if you have, if you have four speed for, for that, then you can just, you know, crouch or use walk. But okay. Um, yeah, what else do I have in my notes? Yeah, so over uh, here. Moving on, moving on, moving on. I'm pretty sure you have backed at this point. So I don't know why you don't just drop down from here to. Well, you can't see in here, but you know where you know that place where you're going to. Backed up, man. Backed up. Saves a lot of time when we're doing this. Like a lot of time. Uh, then over here, you do, uh, you know, you do the normal down conk. You should, what you should be doing is you should be going up to uh, right about here. Uh, 
force jump and then you conk the wall because if you conk down what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of air time over here that's not good so if you just you know force jump up and then conk the wall you will you will like barely just get up this thing or it's ra it's much easier to get like a low conk for that then over here you will have the auto aim thing as mentioned before. Save some more time over there. Nice. And then we're at Valley of the Jedi. We're uh, okay after the Kel Dragons. We go over here, and this part, uh, pretty much everybody I see running this always just go straight across. I mean, they don't land here. They they usually land down here. But either way, it's not fast. Surprisingly, the fastest way to do this is to just, as you're just about here, kind of, you know, lose your speed. I, I crouch and sort of use the wall to slow down as well, so that you can fall down straight from up there to over here. It feels super slow, but it is actually faster by, I think, like a whole, more, more than a second. But yeah, that is actually the last bit of, um, I guess, uh, advice, suggestions that I have for you on this one. I hope this has been useful at all, and uh, <laughs> that the video was not like too boring. I tried to keep it somewhat condensed, but it's kind of hard. I want to I talk about stuff. <laughs> anyway, yeah. GG's again. Congrats, Mr. Floating. I hope to see more. And I hope maybe this will also be useful to somebody else. Cheers.